President Trump wraps up his week-long stay in South Florida today. He heads back to the White House later this afternoon. But yesterday, as some of the most prominent names in politics gathered to bid farewell to former First Lady Barbara Bush, President Trump went on the attack, firing off more than a dozen tweets, many of them filled with insults. The president unloaded in a barrage of tweets Saturday. Mr. Trump again took aim at James Comey, ripping the former fired FBI director as a proven liar and leaker. Slammed the Democratic National Committee for its lawsuit accusing the Trump campaign of conspiring with Russia. Denied claims made by the Washington Post that he once referred to Attorney General Jeff Sessions as Mr. Magoo and his deputy Rod Rosenstein as Mr. Peepers. He floated a posthumous pardon for legendary boxer Jack Johnson at the urging of actor Sylvester Stallone, all while offering thoughts and prayers to the entire Bush family as former First Lady Barbara Bush was laid to rest. But it's Mr. Trump's Twitter tirade targeting the New York Times that's getting the most attention. After the paper ran a story suggesting the president's longtime personal attorney, Michael Cohen, might be willing to cooperate with federal investigators. The New York Times and a third-rate reporter are going out of their way to destroy Michael Cohen and his relationship with me in the hope that he will flip. Statistically, a lot of people flip when they're confronted with the possibility of a federal sentence of many, many years. The FBI raided Cohen's office and residences earlier this month looking for evidence of crimes, partly in connection to payments Cohen made to two women, each claiming affairs with Mr. Trump. The president dismisses the allegations, and Cohen denies any wrongdoing. In an effort to save himself and his family um, and a lot of heartache, he's going to turn on the president. Mr. Trump's focus split between the Cohen fallout and big news out of North Korea. Dictator Kim Jong-un announcing he will suspend nuclear and longer range missile tests and shut down a nuclear test site. It's a dramatic departure from five months ago. While some world leaders reacted to the announcement with skepticism, Mr. Trump hailing it as big progress, ahead of a planned summit between the president and North Korean leader. And while administration officials work out the details of that planned sit-down between President Trump and the North Korean leader, Hallie, they're also set to welcome this week French President Emmanuel Macron and his wife to the White House for what will be President Trump's first state visit while in office. All of it capped off by a state dinner. And Hallie, as you know, state dinners tend to be bipartisan affairs. But this year, in a break with tradition, a source familiar tells us no congressional Democrats are on the invite list. Hallie? Jeff Bennett, we'll see you back in Washington for that. Thank you very much. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.